Welcome to Total Recall. I'm Tom Scholey. Uh, I have a, a new book out called Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. And I have a uh, fantastic four grand design from Marvel. Um, you can follow me uh, on Twitter at Tom Scholey or on Instagram at Tom underscore Scholey. Um, I'm Matt Zioli. You can follow me on Instagram at cinema underscore tomb. Very fun, uh, interesting uh, movie stuff going on over there. So if you like flicks and you like to laugh, uh, come to my Instagram channel. <laughs> okay, so we got the plugs out of the way. Yep. Um, because we're going to be talking about the um, trailers that dropped uh, in relation to like DC fandom. Uh, they dropped a bunch of trailers for upcoming uh, DC superhero movies. We got um, the, the Matt Reeves Batman. Yes. Um, and we have uh, Wonder Woman 84. Wonder Woman 84. And we have um, the uh, Zack Snyder's uh, Justice League, which is like the official title of the Snyder Cut, the, Snyder the mythical cut. Snyder Cut. <laughs> So, um, uh, you want to you wanna do, do uh, the big one first? Yeah, the Batman. Like, Tom, you uh, just, you tipped me off to these trailers. I didn't know they dropped, so... Yeah, because they just dropped uh, today and yesterday um, when we're filming this. Who knows when this, this episode is getting yeah. out there, but, but yeah, they're, they're super fresh now. Super fresh. Um, we had just, we had done an episode on uh, the uh, Batman 89 so we we had Batman on the brain we were vibing out on that and it, it and it's exciting to see a, another Batman movie like I'm all for more Batman mm -hmm. yeah uh, uh, yeah I, I, I love stuff I'm, like I'm especially <laughs> hyped on Batman recently just yeah because of our conversations yeah. about the, the Tim Burton Batman but I, so I've been I've been reading like the rereading the uh, uh, Steve Englehart uh uh um, run of, of Batman is like just like yeah get super <laughs> steeped in like a new wave of Batmania or oh, whatever yeah. so then yeah this trailer comes out and uh, yeah we got Batman on the brain we were watching like behind the scenes stuff so um, this could this is going to cause another uh, yeah another wave, wave of, of Batman fever mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah like uh, people seem like they're really losing it over this trailer like I mean I enjoyed the trailer I'm not like you know foaming at the mouth like in adoration of, like I'm not but that's kind of how I am with these trailers in general. Like, none of these superhero movies ever look good to me in the trailer. Like, any, like going back to, like, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Like, this movie looks like shit. And every single time, I've, like, loved the movie. So I kind of discount my, my visceral reaction to the trailer. So it's like, yeah, this trailer was okay. But I am super stoked for this movie. And, and I was hyped for this movie prior to this trailer just because of uh, Matt Reeves uh, directing yes. and, I think, writing it, too. Uh, I'm a huge Matt Reeves fan. I mean, what I am is I'm a huge fan of the TV show Felicity. Felicity. Yeah, and that was uh, created by J.J. Abrams and Matt Reeves. So I've like followed these guys' careers ever since then. Huge fan. And, and what luck. Like, I love Star Wars. <laughs> and then like this guy whose career I'm following ends up, he, he ends up directing a couple Star Trek movies. And then he directs Star Wars movies. It's, it's like the perfect, like Felicity, um, like I love that show. It's a little bit outside of my wheelhouse. Uh, I'm not the target audience for it, but like it's so well done, I really enjoyed it. But then everything he's done subsequently has been like more and more in my wheelhouse <laughs> until it's like, okay, he's doing Star Wars, yeah, so yeah, like... what's next? Um, yeah, and so Matt Reeves is like the other half of that creative combo. So uh, yeah, he's he, when I heard he was doing Batman, I'm like, okay, I'm on board. I don't I don't care about anything else. Like like this is gonna be good. He um and so he he directed Cloverfield. Yeah, tied in with JJ, like yeah. locked to the hip there, and I had um. Of the found footage flicks, I remember when I saw Cloverfield, I liked it a lot, and I thought it was really good, and um, it's like one of the better found footage movies. It sticks with me, and uh, I have I'm not a Felic I haven't watched the show Felicity like you have, but now I'm going to go back and definitely like dip into. It's that. good. You see, like, um, like the thing that makes the the new trilogy work is kind of like the emotional core of these characters. And, and that you just like you like these characters and you want to spend time with them and and you're you're rooting for them and uh, and, and you know that's that's what makes these new Star Wars movies work is that he's found that emotional core and like everything else is secondary you have to you have to establish so so that's that's a strength but yeah this um, this uh, the Batman trailer it's like it's another interpretation of Batman. There's still meat on that bone. They still like <laughs> yes. it, it seems fresh. Yes, like, it, it does. seems fresh. It's it's like a new it's it is hitting that sort of like 
um, that sort of uh, goth aesthetic that Batman kind of ha- has had to varying degrees, and, and like just kind of hits it like you, know. you are so, you're so spot on with that because what in my brain I had the crow vibe. Yeah, like the crow has crept in, like the crow and crow crow city of angels up, especially like the last shots of like Robert Pattinson's face. He has like the um we were talking before about Batman putting on makeup around his eyes. Yeah, the black makeup, <laughs> and, and we referenced that when we were talking about the Burton stuff, and like um. You know, and when you see, like, the the set photos of, like, you know, Michael Keaton, he's got, you know, he's got the mask off. He's got the black around uh, around his eyes. and But they never show that, like, within the movie itself. You never see, like, Batman with his... When he takes his mask off, suddenly the, it disappears. But um, but this is, like, the first time that's, like, referenced within continuity of, like, oh, yeah, Batman puts this, like, you know, black stuff around his eyes and then puts the mask on. The, um, the vibe, like... Um in the trailer, we got uh, we got Nirvana playing mm-hmm. over the trailer, um, and it, it's uh, giving me like vibes like the it's see, 90s nostalgia. 90s we, nostalgia. We've been doing all this like yes. 80s nostalgia yes. for like a million years, and it's like okay, like long overdue for <laughs> 90s nostalgia. So like yeah, we got some 90s nostalgia. 90s nostalgia going on, and the um, seeing the Batmobile in there, I thought the Batmobile looked like um, like the old Adam West Batmobile plus the the uh, it was like a hot rod almost yeah and, and a little bit of like, like the Italian job yes, kind of Batmobile yes like, and, and it, you know what else um, I love this movie it's like a movie that, that yeah people shit on left and right but like the Green Hornet like I love the Green Hornet I still Hornet. haven't seen it yeah it's, it, recommend. yeah it's awesome and it kind of reminds me of like the Green Hornet's car uh, the Black Beauty I think uh, so. it's, yeah. it's kind of got a little but yeah it's just it's another interpretation of the Batmobile we haven't I'm seen. I'm here for it. The, uh, for my money, the, the Tim Burton Batmobile is like is is the one to beat. That's the top one. But but yeah, it's it's like I'm all I'm all for like a new spin on it. Me too. It like it, yeah like the Adam West Batmobile plus the Burton Batmobile plus like the Bale Batmobile like all mashed in together. Yeah, and we got um and like it looks like. They're they're teasing. They haven't come out and said the villain, but they you know they're teasing. There's like question marks yeah. and riddles in green envelopes. Yeah. So it's like obvious it's the Riddler. Riddler, which is kind of cool. Like it's been a while. It's been yeah, a while since definitely. the Riddler's been featured in 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 one of these things. Uh, uh, not one of my favorite Batman villains, but he is like a, a major. And I'd love to I'd love to see Matt Reeves spin on uh, on the Riddler. And um, throughout the trailer, we get the voiceover. Uh, I was hearing it sounds like Paul Dano. And um, I was looking in there, and I think he is playing the Riddler. Okay. So, um... Oh, yeah, if we didn't say it already, spoiler. (laughs) (laughs) Spoiler, this is another spoiler special. (laughs) Um, uh, Great actor Paul Dano, been in, like, um, so many movies, There Will Be Blood. Yeah. A ton of stuff, but, um... Yeah, he's going to be playing the Riddler in this one. Mm-hmm. And it looked like they had sort of like a Joker street gang in it. So so this yes. might end up being one of these movies where you're just in the Batman universe. And it's like everybody, you know, uh, J- Joker gang shows up. And, and a little bit of like Gotham too. Because it is, it's supposed to be like uh, the origin uh, of Batman. Which again, I'm, I'm always up for Me a, too. an origin of Batman com- uh, movie. And this, it, I was trying to get a good... I, I, I watched it and rewound it a couple times and like froze it. I was trying to get a good look at the bat suit. Yeah. I couldn't get a good cr- uh, crisp... Uh, yeah, I've seen like like the, the bat is like a very like sort of like industrial bat. It's almost like it's just incidentally bat shaped. Like almost <laughs> like it's, it's you've got these like little hinges and screws and th- like, you know, yeah. it's very uh, industrial. So... I don't, you know, maybe it's not even, you know, in story terms supposed to be a bat, but it, obviously it's the bat symbol. Um, but yeah, I mean, looks super cool. Uh, I'm, I'm excited about it. Uh, um, you know, I'll be there. I'll be there. Like, and, and, and uh, you know, I'm always there for a Batman movie. Me too. I haven't missed, I haven't missed even the, the like, you know, Ben Affleck ones and stuff, which I guess we could get to. Uh, maybe this is a good segue to get into, like, the Snyder cut of... Justice League because it's got it's got Bat Fleck it's got, got Bat the Ben Fleck. Affleck Batman <laughs> yeah the the um looks like there's a uh, a lot going on in that trailer yeah and I was trying to follow that you got Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah mm-hmm. um playing over the the proceedings and I, I was having trouble there was following what, what could you well, yeah, yeah parse because, that out because like, the, the way um again like I guess a quick explanation if you haven't heard of the the Snyder cut it's like. Zack Snyder 
uh, you know, created the Justice League movie, and he had already done like Batman versus Superman and and all the different uh, Henry Cavill Superman movies, and so this was like the culmination. This was Justice League, the whole everybody's coming together in this one, uh, and the movie, you know, was was fairly close to completion, and then um, you know, like a tra tragedy struck. Uh, his daughter committed suicide, and so he was, you know, obviously unable to complete the movie, and so uh, Joss Whedon came in and finished the movie, and, but. In handing it off to a different director, he put his own stamp on and like turned it into like a, a completely different movie. Mm -hmm. Like you know, uh, and and so like you know, fans have been wanting to see this this Snyder cut and and like you know, I see, I see like a lot of people kind of like making fun of the endeavor, the whole endeavor of like the Snyder cut. Like it's like who cares, you know? But to me, it's like this is something different. This isn't like oh, the studio decided a different direction or something. Like this, this is. Like, like a movie that didn't happen because of like a profound tragedy, tragedy. like a profound real world tragedy. So it's like, like I'm, I'm all for him getting to like kind of get his See original through. vision out there. And I am like, just as a fan, I'm genuinely interested. I, um, you know, I, I wouldn't say I like, I like, uh, you know, loved the Justice League movie, but I, I, there were some interesting things. And, and then uh, like Zack Snyder's like vision for the DC universe and, and superhero stuff. And then even going to like Watchmen and things. Um, you know, like I'm not like a hundred percent on board, but I there's a lot there that I do enjoy and I and I am into and, and I you know, like I wanna see what happens with this. But so that trailer, it was sort of um, you know, sold as a trailer or, or you know, presented as a trailer, but it seems to me it was more like um he sort of you know, rather than like having these like trailer companies that that like put together who whose specialty is making trailers, yeah. it seemed to me like he put together sort of like a highlight reel yeah. Of like things okay. that were gonna be in the movie and then set it to music. So that's why it didn't it didn't it didn't have like all the stingers and yeah. stuff of like of like a like, trailer. Yeah, the Batman trailer was like That's a trailer. Trailer trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but um I mean uh I am like super and and I, I did uh you know I, I did retweet or tweet a couple like show us the <laughs> Snyder cut kind of thing, you know, in my day. Um yeah, like uh, I am glad that um he's getting his due with the Snyder cut. I know it. It is. It has become kind of funny, like the yeah, whole thing about like people are goofing on it. Like, they goof on everything. Goofing on everything, or or the concept of releasing like the cut of something. Like for Sonic the Hedgehog was like release the teeth cut. Yes. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, what the heck? I guess like the, the granddaddy of all this stuff is the Donner cut of Superman two, which I'm also I'm a huge fan of. Like I want I want the cut of like everything. Yeah, I like, know. I'm, I'm on I know. board. I'm, I'm on board. board. So I'm excited and like. I, I want to see, you know, I want to see what that vision was. I, I want to see, uh, you know, Superman without a CGI uh, <laughs> upper lip, you know, mustache removed. And I want to see, the, the main thing I want to see, I want to see Darkseid. Like, I'm a huge Jack Kirby fan, as you know. I'm a yeah. huge New Gods fan. Uh, I'm a huge Darkseid fan. Like, I always wondered why it took them so long to get Darkseid into these movies. Because the movie came out and the big bad was Steppenwolf. Who's Darkseid's uncle? This okay. like incredible. It's a Kirby character, awesome, you know. Uh, but like, really, like a Z-list character. Like most people never even heard of him, and then he's announced as the heavy. Uh, and it's like, well, how can, where's Darkseid? And why isn't Dark? And so like, Darkseid is a part of, it. and that was one of the big, you know, parts of this trailer was like you see, you know, Darkseid, and, okay. and you know, and he's been hinted, and and so like, I'm, I just as a Kirby fan, I'm excited to see more sort of like Kirby content. On you know in, on the big screen movie. yeah yeah or, or I guess it's going to come out on HBO Max so it's not you know like like your screen at home is pretty big yeah you know? I'm sure <laughs> you, you your uh, uh, your movie going experience at home is going to beat uh, you know people will have a great setup at, at home I'm yeah sure. yeah so and and then eventually you know uh, Zack Snyder sort of said Zack Snyder said there's going to be like. It's going to debut on, on HBO Max in four one-hour segments. Oh, wow. Uh, and then, but there's eventually going to, of course, going to be like some <laughs> version that you can, you can you know, buy in some form and, and, and experience. So, yeah. Well, that's I'm exciting. exciting. Yeah. Really exciting. And the, um, there was another trailer that dropped, too. Yeah, Wonder Woman 1984, uh, which, again, like, like I, uh, I mean, I enjoyed, uh, you know, Wonder Woman. Like, from, from the moment she showed up in Batman vs. Superman... Um, yeah, like, ama like steals the show. The actress Gal Gadot is, like, such perfect casting. casting. Like, she is such a great Wonder Woman. 
uh, just, you know, tremendous charisma and, and just like pulls focus. And like when she shows up in, as Wonder Woman in Batman yeah. versus Superman, like you could feel it in the theater. It's like, okay, I, let's follow her. Like forget these other, other guys. Let's follow her. Let's see what she's up to. Like, I think, I think she's like sort of transcends the material. Um, I, I enjoyed like the Wonder Woman movie, uh, but I thought that she was way better than the material that she then, was given, but it, it was still it was still great seeing her in action, and, and yet and, and so I'm really looking forward to, to this next installment, 1984. The cast looks great. You got um, Pedro Pas- uh, Pascal. Um, he plays the Mandalorian, and he he was recently I saw him as the villain in the Equalizer two. He was awesome in that. Um, so he he's in it. Uh, you got Kristen Wiig. That's the that's the what one casting. I wanted to talk about because. When I heard Kristen Wiig, like I heard a while ago that Kristen Wiig was going to be in this, and I assumed she'd be like the best friend, the quirky best yeah. friend character. I didn't realize she's going to be the heavy. She's going to be the villain. She's going to be Cheetah, who's like this um, Wonder Woman villain who's like been there since you know the nineteen forties. Like this is like a classic Wonder Woman villain, and she's playing it. And it's it's interesting to me. Like I know that Kristen Wiig has, uh, like we 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 know her from comedy, but um, I know she's like played dramatic roles before. Uh, but you know this like to play like a serious you know superhero villain. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, and that that is great casting. Very interesting, and like my thoughts are always like, um, you know, if you're a comedian or you're doing comedic roles or like you're on SNL, um, you, I you can do drama. Like comedians mm-hmm. can definitely do drama. Always, it's always like, hey, is that dramatic actor? Can he can can that person pull off the comedy? But it's like. If somebody's a comedian and they're good at being a comedian, they can definitely do drama. Yeah, and uh, Michael Keaton put to rest a long <laughs> yes. time ago the idea yes. of, like, hey, what's a comedian doing <laughs> playing, like, a serious role in a superhero movie? Yeah, you, you, you said, um, hey, Mr. what's Mr. Mom, Mom doing <laughs> playing Batman? This is going to stink. What is, what is yeah. this, uh, a parody or something? So, yeah, Chris, like, I mean, it's just, like, her comedic... Per- I guess this is, like, what everybody goes through whenever, you know... Uh, one of these, you know, sort of comedic uh, actors gets in one of these roles. It's just kind of like, oh, how's that going to? Because like you see her and you're already ready to laugh. But I, you know, I, I can't wait to see. I think, yeah, I think they're going to pull it off. It's also kind of interesting. Like in the trailer, they sort of you see her and Wonder Woman kind of like square off, and she's like not quite fully cheetah yet. She's ready to, but she's got kind of like this like eighties uh, like, look going, and and they're going to fight. But then. Towards the end of the trailer, you start to see that we get like full on CGI <laughs> cheetah. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's inter- it's gonna be interesting seeing um, Kristen Wiig be sort of this like CGI villain, and that was like for me that was um, one of the weaknesses of the Wonder Woman movie was that um, and, and a lot of these superhero movies where like the climactic battle is with sort of like a CGI villain, like you just don't feel the connection. Uh, you know, like you like, just need stuff to be in the frame. Yeah, I, like so. So if this <laughs> has like, like if this has like a, a if this culminates in this like purely CGI kind of character fight, like mm, yeah. you know, we'll see. But again, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. How, yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. I really am. And the um, uh, Patty Jenkins director, she did the previous one, so yeah. she's back, keeps her vision alive. Yeah, and um, like. It, it's interesting the time period. Like, there's a lot of '80s references in it, and I guess like I guess like you can't like in movies now you can't go any further back than the '80s. Yeah, like yeah. unless it's like <laughs> World War II or like uh, you know the War of eighteen twelve or 1776. Like like you 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 can't do the '70s. You can't do the '60s. You can't do the '50s or the '40s. Uh, um, you know, like um, so it's like okay, it's the '80s. Like that's that's like ancient history is the '80s. Um, and so they got all these like '80s fashions, and then that's like part of the jokes in the in the trailer is like you know parachute pants. Oh, is everybody jumping out of parachutes now? Um, and and I guess like Steve Trevor, you know, comes out of ice like Captain America style or something in this too, because he's you know he hasn't aged. Because the first movie, again, this like the first movie takes place in World War One, which is kind of an like an off beat. Because of course you would expect World War Two, like that's kind of like the genesis of the Wonder Woman character was like, you know, in the World yeah. War Two era. So it's like World War One, that's interesting. And then also like, you know, well like, um, there's not as much of like a clear cut, you know, good and evil moral battle 
in World War One as opposed to World War Two, where it's like totally, you know, like a clear. So, so, uh, but again, you know, you know, maybe maybe that makes for something more interesting. And so then I thought like, oh, they're doing World War One because the second movie is going to be World War Two, and it's going to be called. WW2. It's going to be like Wonder Woman 2. Yeah, so when they right jumped there. to 84, it's like, oh, wow, you skipped a lot of stuff. Yeah. You skipped like 70s Linda Carter era um, Wonder Woman. You know, you skipped a lot of, or, or like 60s groovy uh, Emma Peel uh, Avengers, uh, you know, Wonder Woman. I was looking up the flicks that came out in 1984. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. What a what a year for movies. So, hey, I'm, I'm glad to see 1984 uh, back on the big stage again. You'll probably see a lot of references there. And I do like the overall aesthetic that I've seen in, in, in these trailers of just this, like, really, like, synth pop, you know, multicolored kind of, like, you know, you know eye candy. Kinda, oh, yeah. You know. and, and then there's, like, this gold armor that she she's, like, wearing. I in, saw like, that in You know, there. which I guess is, like, the climactic battle. Like, that's her CGI. Like, like uh, Kirsten Wig is going to be a CGI cheetah, and then and she's going to she- be this, like, CGI golden... Uh, uh, armored character and like I don't remember that from the golden armor from the comics but I've you know since learned that like yeah there was like a little era or, or mini series or whatever where, where she did don this golden armor like it's it's you know pretty yeah cool. uh, I'm excited for these yeah me too so uh, yeah the to- total recall trailer uh, trailer rundown I, 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 hey I'm all up anytime there's these uh, cool trailers dropping we'll be here to um, vibe out on yeah them. and you know looking forward to to you know, finally seeing a movie like hopefully you see some of the, these yeah. uh, in a, in a theater. What it, uh, that feels like uh, a million years ago. Yeah, well, yeah. One of these days we'll get back to the the movie theaters themselves. So you've been watching Total Recall, and uh, I'm Tom Scholey. I'm Matt Zioli, and we'll see you later. See ya. <laughs>